Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our international wellness series, Bricks and Beyond, uh, part two with IBM India. I'm Sarah Hunt, Education Engagement Coordinator for the Corporate Health and Wellness Association and Assistant Editor for the Corporate Wellness Magazine. As you know, a growing trend in today's corporations is becoming uh, multinational. So how are some of today's Fortune 500 um, encouraging healthy behaviors in, in various countries? This is the focus of our International Wellness Bricks and Beyond webcast series. We're excited to bring you an excellent and very timely webcast uh, regarding one employer's global health promotion strategy. Today's presentation is brought to you by, um, uh, in a partnership with IAWHP and the Corporate Health and Wellness Association. Our co-presenter, uh, Wolf, will be taking a little, uh, a minute to talk about the partnership and the webcast series. I would like to begin today's presentation by welcoming each of our presenters. The first expert I'd like to introduce is Dr. Siam uh, Pingle. He is the Associate Director and Country Leader for Integrated Health Services uh, for India, South Asia, for IBM in India. Dr. Pingle is a senior uh, occupational health expert from, from India more than three decades of professional experience. He started his professional career as a medical teacher and has worked with leading Indian uh, industries and corporate houses. Uh, Dr. Pingle has worked as vice president uh, with Reliance Industries Limited in India for 16 years. I would also like to introduce Wolf Kirsten. Wolf is the founder and president of International Health Consulting uh, based in Arizona. Um, in Hamburg, Germany. His consulting portfolio is uh, truly global, uh, advising companies on health and well-being strategies such as Johnson & Johnson, IBM, um, in many regions throughout the world. He is currently the president of the International Association of Worksite Health Promotion and a co-host of the Global Health Workplace Awards. Today's webcast is going to be available uh, in about 48 hours from today, we will be combining the video with the PowerPoint, and we'll also be emailing it to all participants so that you can watch it again or share it with your colleagues if you'd like. Um, you can also type any questions at any time. If time permits, uh, question and answer will be uh, addressed throughout the presentation as well as at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I'd now like to pass it over uh, today's webcast to Wolf Person. We'll talk a little bit more about the International Wellness Webcast Series and today's case study. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Um, uh, I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, some streaming in here through the window, so it's a very nice day, as, as most time. I'm very glad uh, that we uh, have our second um, webcast in our international series of uh, featuring the uh, BRICS and beyond. And most of you will know that the BRICS uh, stand for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, kind of signifying the, the emerging, or actually I would say more, more than just emerging, already there, economic powerhouses uh, in the world. And we will have additional presentations, uh, case studies from Germany, Singapore, and the UAE, all very interesting and with uh, varying challenges there as well. Uh, as uh, Sarah indicated, this is really their kind of first uh, uh, joint initiative between the uh, Corporate Health and Wellness Association and the association that I'm president of, the International uh, Association of Worksite Health Promotion, uh, focusing mostly on practitioners who are really uh, on the ground uh, and are implementing programs. And I'm very happy about it, and uh, it's great to, to do this initiative, and we, we're planning to do more joint uh, uh, initiatives, so that's great. Um, as I said, the BRICS are uh, really our ma main focus, uh, and we want to highlight good practices in these countries. And I would say that I think all of them, all of the ones that we have um, targeted and invited are global leaders and uh, are award winners uh, in themselves, in their country or maybe even internationally. Uh, last time, a few weeks ago or months ago, we had Dow Chemical. All of you know Dow Chemical is a uh, a global leader in many ways in, in, in workplace health promotion, health and well-being, and we had a great presentation from Brazil, from Lucio, and uh, it was very enjoyable. 
And now we can we move on to India. And uh, India, as as you know, a uh, huge, huge huge country, huge uh, a lot of challenges. I won't go into detail because Dr. Fiam um, will uh, will cover those. But I'm, I'm very glad that we can uh, the second web path really can focus on on you know one of the most important countries in the world. I would say. Um, I should also mention that we, uh, in our third webcast coming out, we will actually jump to Germany, but that's for, that's for the future. For now, we'll focus on India, and I should say, obviously, IBM, everybody knows IBM, right? It's, uh, it's a huge company that's been a technology leader for many, many years, really uh, older than most technology companies, because most of them are young these days, so, so it's, it's a great story. And uh, also on the health side, uh, IBM has been doing this for a long time, and not just in the U.S., they're a global company as global as you can get, and uh, Dr. Shiam will um, uh, relate to, uh, to that as well. So we'll, we'll talk about the health-related challenges in general in India, and then really get into the nitty-gritty of what IBM is doing globally and then in India. And uh, I won't uh, introduce uh, Dr. Pingley again, because Sarah already did that, but I do want to mention uh, uh, Dr. Pingley's great work with the Indian Association of Occupational Health, and that's how I got to know him many years ago in India. Uh, he's been, been very active has been a president uh, of the association between 2009 and 2011, and has held various positions in addition over the years and still uh, actively evolved, uh, involved uh, on the advisory board. So, um, uh, and I think, you know, done really a great job in terms of advancing health at the workplace, uh, occupational health and wellness uh, in India, which is so important, as, as we all agree. So I'm going to hand it over now to, to Dr. Shiam and uh, look forward to your presentation. Take it away. Hi, thank you all. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to have this privilege. And uh, at the outset, I would like to thank both Wolf, Sarah, as well as both the associations who are organizing this fantastic event. I like this concept of bridging the gap of distances and uh, bringing people face to face and exchanging their ideas. Well, I extend to you warm greetings from India. Very good morning to you and good evening. I can also see some friends from India on the webcast. Well, so employee health in IBM India, that's what I would try to talk about today. Uh, this is how I intend to go in the next 35 minutes. Uh, telling you a little bit about India, what are the health and safety challenges, and a little bit about uh, IBM, uh, uh, the leadership commitment, about my integrated health services wherein I work, and the global wellness program that we are having, as well as India-specific wellness initiatives that we have. After that, we'll go to questions. I'll be very happy to fill your questions and to clarify your doubts, if any. Uh, I think uh, I'm still, uh, am I visible? Uh, I think, is there a problem with the video? Because uh, I see myself in the small box. Anyway, I'll go ahead. I hope it will take care of itself. Yeah. So India is, as you know, a very old country. It's a 5,000 year old civilization. But what is more important is it's the largest democracy since last 66 years and it has faced many challenges but it has stayed intact. Uh, we have a, we are something like Europe, we have a federal structure, we have 29 states, 5 union territories, we have a huge area of 3.2 million, 3 .2 million square kilometers, we have a huge coastline and most importantly there are 100 and 27 or 1.27 billion workers or uh, people who are staying in this country. And uh, of course we have a fastest growing IT industry and we also have a phenomenal growth in women workforce for a period of last few years. Well, you see this picture. There is a great significance to this picture. This is the seventh billion baby which was born in India. And why I say it's significant? Because first, it's a baby, it's a female child. So that means women are rising. Second, it's from a rural area. That means the rural-urban divide in 
India is getting great. Well, so we have a working age population which is almost 63 percent currently, uh, and 90 percent of people still work in informal economy and services, agriculture, and 10 percent people, close to 10 percent people work in organized. We have a birth rate of 22.8 and a death rate of 7.4. So therefore, net addition to the population continues. We have improved our life expectancy to 66 years in case of males and 72 years in case of females. And we have a fast growing private health sector. We are even attracting health tourism. Well, the India story is basically younger and stronger. We have the world's largest and youngest population. And the proportion of working age population is also rising. And uh, there are about, there are expected to be about 63 million new entrants in the working age group in the, between the five years between 2011 and 2016. And the bulk of this increase is going to be the young and productive age group of 20 to 35. So what we, do, uh, what we see today is a multi-generational workforce. There are generation X or baby boomers and then Y. Both are there, and therefore it's a challenge managing that. Well, this was published in Economic Times, uh, the Economist, a couple of years ago, and you can see how India is compared with China. They are going to be more hands on clothes and keyboards. When coming back to the health challenges in India, yes, the population is increasing. The death rate has reduced, but the death rate continues to be high. Our healthcare structure is overburdened by increasing population. But India also faces the twin epidemic. We have continuing infectious diseases, which are of course getting coming into control now. But we also have emerging chronic diseases, which are increasing. And India has a dubious distinction of world's diabetic capital, as well as world's uh, heart disease capital. The, there are infectious diseases like malaria and tuberculosis, which are coming under control. But then there are also a growing threat of non-communicable diseases in the form of heart diseases, diabetes, cancers, respiratory diseases, etc. Other important problems which we face are traffic accidents and some cases of self-harm. I'll first uh, also like to touch a little bit upon the safety challenges that we say in India because it will not be right to separate health and safety. We have to manage them together because it's only when safety fails that health comes into picture. So what we see here is fire and life safety physical environment, behavioral safety, because of the young population and the migration that is taking place from villages to urban areas, we see a lot of risk-taking attitude which uh, we have to tackle. And there is a problem with transportation safety, road traffic accidents as in any developing economy. Of course, there is lack of knowledge and awareness which will certainly get over, but there are also food safety is an issue in some areas. And this contractor or vendor safety is a big issue because more and more work is being outsourced. So you have to maintain the same quality of health and safety. Uh, I think I'm still not in full video. So Sara or uh, the technical support, if you are listening, uh, you can ensure that. Well, uh, when it comes to health threats in corporate India, as we see them, the first and foremost measure is, of course, the unhealthy lifestyle management. We see diet and nutrition. Problems with that, eating more fast food, there's lack of physical activity as we go more into services and more into present work. There is there's a lot of competition which leads to stress and depression. And work-life balance is an issue, certainly. Well, and what do we see in health threats? Again, is the prevalence of various health risk factors. There has been a study of uh, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, and PHFI, which was recently published a few years ago, and it showed an admitted and accepted prevalence of smoking in, in excess of 30 percent, overweights were in excess of 51 percent. Uh, in fact, the most old corporates will have a rate even higher than that. We also see diabetes and pre-diabetes to the extent of 10 percent and hypertension to the extent of 20 percent. So as you can see, these are the major issues or major challenges that we need to tackle. When we look at current work with health trends in India, we see that there is a greater awareness at all levels. Of course, we need an attitude change, but uh, now it has been accepted that accidents and diseases don't go with the job anymore. 
and this thing need to be addressed and that is being done. Safety and health at work now matters for businesses, it is coming into their priority and safety, at, safety and health at work is being dealt with in a more structured way and not in a reactive way but also preventive and proactive way. We also have a rights based, rights -based, rights -based approach has already been there but now it is complemented by a promotional approach. So there is health promotion. And there have been six significant achievements. Here the small photograph that you see are the leaders in corporate India, the Indian Association of Occupational Health and they belong to various industries and who are engaged into these various activities. The enterprise health approach, uh, the public sector initially had a community health approach wherein they focused on curative medical services, mother and child nutrition, prevention of communicable diseases but now they are also graduating to prevention of non-communicable diseases. The private sector uh, typically have a workplace approach and their focus is on wellness, chronic disease management, especially diabetes, hypertension and other problems, ergonomics because that's a major issue and stress management because it is becoming more and more important. An IT sector in India is very growing very fast and has become, has come to occupy a very important place in the country. It employs more than 300 million, more than 3 million people directly and there is also an indirect employment of 9 million people. 25% of India's exports are contributed by the IT sector and it is also contributing to the GDP to the extent of 7.5% as we saw in 2012 and revenues over 100 billion dollars in last year and uh, it is still expected that a growth of 12 to 14% has been forecast by NASCOM which is the industry of IT sector in India. That now brings me to the organization I work with, IBM, Integrated Business Machines. Of course, we also call it jokingly as I by myself. So it's an innovation company. We pursue continuous transformation both in what we do and how we do it. We are a globally integrated enterprise uh, so that we capture new growth and productivity. There are revenues, you can see the figures, I need not decide them. A revenue of 104 billion, net income of 15 billion, total assets. Well, we have worldwide total employees of 434,000 and that was the figure of 2012. IBM has a long history and deep roots in India. It was present in India right from the year 1951, that is a few years after India was liberated and got independence. It was there, then uh, in 70s it went out for certain reasons which you all know very well, then it came back in 1992. First it started as a joint venture with an Indian company, Tata. Then it became, in 99, it became a completely India, IBM India Private Limited and it has been there since then. IBM has grown and India has grown. IBM uh, contributes to whichever country it works with and ensures that the country also benefits from IBM and IBM naturally benefits from the country. If you see, uh, well, this is how it is. We have a domestic business, we have global businesses, we have research, India Software Labs, and we also have global process services. There are various centers of excellence which are located in India in various emerging areas. There have been various awards and recognition. I will not go into that. But what is important is there has been commitment to leadership. And right the IBM's founding father, Thomas J. Watson, Jr., right in 1932, he said that safety is a matter of individual responsibility for each factory, for each establishment, for each president, for each executive, for each foreman, and for each worker. Well, then we were a manufacturing company. Now we are a service company. And so what our senior vice president in charge of HR, Randy McDonald, he says that our support for well-being through prevention is vital to our innovation, productivity, and morale. So in nutshell, in IBM, employee well-being is considered as a strategic value and a fundamental component in company success. And whatever support we want is always available and we want, we are trying to take innovation in the health services and in wellness areas also. We have a leadership commitment and global alignment in whatever we do. We have a well-being management system. We have OSHA certification, OSHA 17001 certification globally. We have a corporate policy 127 which provides teeth to what we want to do on the wellness front in our organization. 
Well, I belong to Integrated Health Services. Uh, it comprises of occupational health, wellness and health promotion, fire and life safety, occupational hygiene, and ergonomics. Those are the five important areas, and they are all integrated, and all the professionals are there. We have 50 global health priorities. As you can see, there are four important pillars in safety, medical, health benefits, and health promotion. There are 10 elements in each pillar. I'll not go into the details of it. But there are also 10 foundational principles on which we work. So when we look at the key safety challenges, they are there in office as well as extended workplace. It's uh, what we have to both safety and health is an integrated approach. And we have building design aspects, operation and maintenance, emergency response, food and water. We also look after off-site events. So there is an event safety management angle to it. And there is also driving and transport safety because the employee driving behavior is important and we also have mass transportation so that safety was important. There are two types of health and wellness programs. Globally, IBM has very successful global programs. So they are being extended to the country. And we also have India-specific wellness initiatives, which we have devised based on our culture, our needs, and what will succeed in India. We have a philosophy, commit to health. That's how we have branded wellness, occupational health, ergonomics, safety, and IBM. And we say it's not a tool or a resource, but it's a philosophy, which encourages all IBMers to commit to a healthier way of life. There, are an, there is an array of resources that we want to give to the employees so that they succeed in their commitment to health. So they have a commitment to health and we also want to support them by giving them various resources. So IBM commits to empowering employees and employees commit to taking action. So this is a give and take. And naturally our goal is to make healthiest choice the easiest choice by putting resources directly into the employees' hands. We have three major global programs which are there in India. Wellness Checkpoint or HRA, Health Risk Assessment, Virtual Health Fair and Wellness Advice. I'll come to that. So in Wellness Checkpoint, it is a health risk assessment wherein various factors relating to health, work as well as life are being considered. And it's a tool which is based on scientific method wherein an employee answers a set of simple questions. It takes about 30 minutes to complete and tool provides a personalized feedback to the employee. It also gives connections to the local program and also gives him what recommendations he needs to follow, what corrective measures he needs to have. And uh, a large number of employees have already completed. That also gives us what is the risk profile and where we need to concentrate and where we need to focus. Second major important global initiative which has been extended to India, in fact it has been piloted in India, is wellness advice. It's a telephonic helpline on health and wellness related issues. It is available 24 by 7. It is available not only to employees, but it is also extended to the family members, wherein there is a treatment and decision support, condition management, wellness coaching. Employees can speak to the counselors on both physical and mental health, and wherever required, even physical patients, face-to-face -face patients are also available. Herein, our basic objective is also to destigmatize the issue of mental health, because in developing countries like India, mental health is a major issue. It is a stigma. It is considered as a stigma. It should not be. And people are not very open about it. So when mental health becomes a part of all health, wellness, and other activities, we hope that it will not be stigmatized and people will be more open and there will be more support which people will seek and will be able to do better. Virtual health care was an innovative exercise which we conducted recently wherein there were various webcasts which were delivered in a virtual auditorium like we are doing today. It was done in the same fashion. They were recorded. They are also available to the people year round, but they were delivered at a specific time, at the specific date. Of course, it's a big challenge because I mean it's a global organization, so we are working 24 by 7, and the content is available for download, and there were many topics which were uh, tackled, which were answered. There were questions and answers, and they are still available to people to connect. And they, we are also connected them with our HRA so that based on whatever is the outcome and whatever is the recommendation, employees can log on to that and get benefits 
of the program. Now coming to India wellness program. Yes, every country is different, every culture is different. The problems will be different and solutions will also be different. Now these are not in a particular order of importance, but I definitely want to start with the fairest thing, that is women, because in IBM we have diversity. In India also it has been extended. So women well-being program is very important for us. But what is most important is healthy pregnancy. Uh, we have like all developing countries, we also observe that uh, pregnancy needs to be supported because nowadays all pregnancies are patient pregnancy. There will be as our birth rate is decreasing. So we need to support them. We also need to empower them to take appropriate decisions in their pregnancy, uh, whatever way they want to go about. Then we have stress management and uh, suicide prevention program or self-harm prevention program. We have various physical environment, building safety reviews. We have transport and driving safety program. Then as the mainstay of our wellness program is the health screening program with which we start. It is followed by fitness champion program or fitness champion league. I'll talk to you a little short while about it. And then there is a sleep management program because we have a lot of fit workers. Then there is a cafeteria management program because a large number of our population is in the cafeteria which are available at the workplace, so that's also a significant issue. And there is flu vaccination program, wherein we provide free flu vaccination to all our employees across the country. So in transport safety, we are conducting sustained awareness campaigns, there is a strong leadership support. IBM has declared a policy. We have a written policy on mandating health, helmet and seatbelt usage for IBM employees, so all the vehicles which are entering IBM premises and subsequently wherever whether they are in IBM or outside IBM employees are expected to follow these norms because it is in their own interest. There is also a physical inspection and review every six months in case of mass transportation. So this is the recent campaign which we ran. So the main branding was all it takes is 30 seconds. Whether you want to wear a helmet, whether you want to use use the seat belt, it takes not more than 30 seconds to you. So that is how we try to brand it. So there has been workplace branding, mailers, through employee news links, there has been city-wise communication, and there is a reinforced communication through manager, and we are seeing very good results with this program. Then we have health screening program, where basically we screen for diabetes and heart diseases. It's an on-site program, and uh, there is a biometric screening, screening for BMI, blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol level. So we identify the high-risk cases which are referred to the physician for further diagnosis and treatment. And there is what we have observed as a result of continuously conducting this camp every year is there is a reduction in the high-risk category. I'll come to how we tackle for that. But these camps are very popular and a very large number of employees uh, uh, come and take benefit of this. Uh, activities. Well, as a solution, because we are talking of high risk categories and we are talking of problems, then we also need to give a solution. So we want to promote physical fitness. So as a result of that, we have devised Fitness Champion League, which is a fitness champions program. Now there is a small, there is a little bit different, you know, in India, the most popular game is cricket, which is like a religion in India, as that one is to you. And uh, the, the most important cricket event is known as Indian Premier League in India, which is very popular. I'm sure even you have heard about it because it's quite rich and it's quite famous. So we have this fitness champion league, which we have styled on those lines. It's a six-week six week long event. There are various team-based events, and they're conducted across India in various cities. Employees register and participate in these events. They are fun things. Because our country leader, that she told us, yes, she is a lady, Vanita Narayan. She told us that all my people are young. So you have to give them, they, 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 they have a different attitude. So you have to make health as fun. Uh, otherwise, they won't take interest in it. Otherwise, only those who are having health problems will come to you for uh, health related things. So we, whereas we want to reach the young people and not that they should get a health problem. So employees register and participate in this fun field event. And there are events related to diet, BMI, and physical exercises. I'll come to it in a moment. 
and uh, attractive prizes which are to be won. Yes, a carrot, a dangling carrot is always used. So this is the program format. Uh, there are six six programs. In the first week, we had registration and BMI measurement, where we measure their height and weight, and we record it. Then in the second week, there, is, there are aerobic stations for all employees across the offices and locations. These have proved to be extremely popular, and people are even willing to pay for it for continuation of this station. Then in the third week, there are diet sessions for all employees, wherein we give them inputs about diet. Then there is a performance tracking in the fourth week, and in the fifth week, again, we have health sessions for all employees across cities and locations, wherein we give them various quizzes, various ideas, various health quiz, one minute health educational activities, etc., various health games, and all that. Then uh, in the sixth week, again, the final measurements are taken. We see how many, what physical activities, of course, we give them all the inputs and all the information. They are supposed to follow them even beyond working hours. And there are weekly lucky drop which are given at various regions. And there are also regional and national prizes which are given at the end of the program. So, and what is the outcome? Yeah, this is, this our our uh, regional general manager or the country leader, the leader for uh, HR, and these are the prize winners who were there. So we saw a very high persistence rate of about 12.8% in overall participation. What I mean by persistence rate is it is a six-week program. So these are the people who have participated in all the events all through the six weeks, whereas all other people have also participated in the majority of the events, but not other. Then what we found is that whenever the manager participation was there, it has significantly increased the persistence rate. So from an average of 12.8, it went to 20.7 percent wherever the team manager was participating in the event. Then there is higher persistence in participation among high BMI participants, which is a very positive thing. Because usually people with high BMI and problems, they try to shy away, but here they were trying to do something about it, and we are very happy about it. Then Whenever the manager is uh, participating, the persistence increases almost with double. And as a result, what we found at the end of six weeks, which is a relatively short period, and I was extremely surprised, pleasantly surprised, that there has been a significant reduction to the extent of 5% in obesity, or the participants who were categorized as obese, they converted into non-obese, from obese they became overweight, with net improvement in their BMR category. And that was a very pleasant surprise, and we were very happy. So, and though all those who persisted, they had higher weight loss. There have been people who lost I mean, 10 kgs of weight in six weeks. Of course, we were telling them not more than one kg per week. That's why this monitoring was there. There were prizes, weekly prizes, then individual prizes, team prizes, regional prizes, and all in the prizes. And you can see here some of the all in the winners in this. So, that's a, a very interesting program, and I'm very happy to share it with you. Stress management, yes, work-life balance is a major issue, and that needs to be achieved because there's a lot of competition, competition in the sector, competition in the organization, competition in the department. We want to breed competition, we want to support competition, but we do not want competition to affect the people, we do not want competition to affect the performance, we do not want the competition to affect their personal life. So, so that's why we have embarked upon employee assistance program, which is, as I explained to you, you already, there's a telephonic helpline which is available, but in addition, various other services like counseling are also available, there is self-help articles, wherever required, there is psychiatric referral is also available, financial and legal counseling is also available because we found that that also contributes to the stress uh, that employee has suffered. There are the self-assessment questionnaires there, then we have manager and HR training programs, there are online programs, there are also classroom patients, and there are also employees employee awareness modules which are available online, which are available in person also, which employees have been participating in. Well, proof of the pudding should always be there. So what have we achieved? In all these programs, we have achieved high health risk groups. We have identified them. We were able to identify them. Then we have had successful intervention in the high health risk groups. And the reason 
that we are seeing a reduction in the health risk in this high health risk group. Uh, let me make it very clear that IBM believes in confidentiality. Therefore, all the employees' medical documents, their medical reports, and everything is strictly confidential. We have a wellness partner, and the wellness partner manages these things. The reports are not available to the manager. The reports are not available to the management. And that's why employees have more faith and they come forward very eagerly. Now, what we have observed is that this, I mean, the ultimate uh, thing that you can see is despite enhancement in medical insurance benefits, yes, the medical insurance benefits have been enhanced and there are been uh, very distinctive benefits which are not available with other organizations, other employers which are available to IBM employees, whether it is coming to all IBM employees, whether it is in reference to the psychiatric conditions, whether it is in reference to the pre-existing diseases or the outpatient diseases or investigation, they are all available. They have been increasing every time. And our insurance premium rate has been flat, is flat and it has not increased. All the organizations in the country that I know of, it has been increasing every year. And it has been increasing very significantly because there is also medical information which cannot be denied. But how we have achieved it in IBM is because of the wellness initiatives which are there. We have an excellent wellness partner also. And all these activities are being conducted. I, for lack of time, I wanted to be very brief. And uh, I did not, I wanted to spend more time on the question and answer and your doubts and also to take input from you. But this is all I had to, I wanted to tell you. And uh, what, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, I welcome them. And uh, I'll be very happy to share with you my thoughts and my comments. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Neil. Uh, what great insight you've brought today. I'd now like to announce uh, the opportunity for our listeners to ask questions um, to Dr. Pingel or uh, Wolf Kirsten. Um, you can begin typing in your, your questions at this time in the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your screen. And uh, Wolf Kirsten will help in moderating the questions as they come in. Yeah, th thanks, Sarah. I, I don't see any questions yet, uh, but let me know if you see some. First of all, a big thank you to uh, Dr. Shiam. Thank you. I know it's a, it's a pretty late hour in India, so for, for making yourself available at this hour and for, for, uh, for everybody to, to have the opportunity to listen to you here, especially in the we're still fairly early. So thank you, first of all. Um, so uh, I see a first question here. Let me read it and let me see if I understand it. Um, are you providing these activities and programs in conjugation with any entity? Um, I'm not sure how to inter interpret that. Maybe uh, in terms of a provider or a vendor in India, uh, Dr. Shiam, could, could you respond to that? <clears throat> uh, certainly respond. We have a wellness partner. In fact, uh, we have a, a medical insurance partner, and he also doubled up as our wellness partner because we believe he also has a stack in keeping the claims low, and therefore they will uh, be very interested in helping us with wellness activities. However, the wellness activities are all designed by our in-house team and uh, because we want to maintain confidentiality and because we are a small team and uh, we are present, uh, the employees are present across the country, we have uh, Apollo Munich is our insurance partner and a wellness partner. Okay, very good. No. Uh, okay, another question here. This uh, must come out of the US. <laughs> Do you uh, utilize, or did you utilize any financial incentives other than raffle for the fitness program? And do you use any financial incentives for completion of the HRA? Absolutely not. We do not give any financial incentive. However, uh, we have the raffles wherein uh, people can win prizes, but even those prizes are healthy gadgets, like Tidometer. And, uh, uh, or a membership to the gymnasium or a health club. So th these are the things that we promote and uh, because we feel that ultimately they'll help them. 
but no financial incentive is given, no cash is given for completing the HRA in India. Yeah, I think I think that reflects pretty much. Uh, this is more of a, a I think, uh, looking at it globally, uh, more of a U.S. strategy. Uh, you know, large degree based on the health uh, insurance system here. Uh, in, in large parts of the rest of the world, you don't have that. They, you have incentives here and there, like raffles, but not in, uh, financial. So I, that's, I guess, uh, uh, that, that's where it leads. Uh, as a good follow-on question right here is, uh, how do you motivate your employees to participate in all of these amazing programs you have available? Yes, uh, there is no simple answer to this question, because that is what everyone is struggling about. Uh, we need to motivate the people. Uh, now we follow a strong communication strategy. Our communication, of course, is through email. But uh, whenever there are important programs, we also have standees and posters which are displayed. But we like to go through the managers and the HR partners, human resource partners, which are there. So whenever an event is coming up, we try to go through them so that whenever communication and as I explained in the my uh, slides on. Uh, fitness champion league, whenever a manager is participating, the results are better, the participation is better, and the results are also better. And we have a large number of managers, so they are also an important factor, so we try to go through the managers. That is how we try to motivate them. And of course, uh, incentives like healthy gadgets and all, they also help. And then we also take this opportunity, we have a very strong leadership support, as you saw, that uh, the country regional general manager, who is the country chief, and she came down all the way to give prizes in Fitness Champion League. It is a very small thing, but it was a nice gesture from her side. And uh, because the leadership makes it known that they support this activity. And the employees, by word of mouth also, employees uh, talk to each other, and then we get more and more support from the employees. One thing that we ensure and for which we take a lot of pains is the quality of programs that we offer. We are very finicky about it. We do all the double homework, over time we go over time and we ensure that the quality of program is excellent so that whenever people attend this program, they must come back to the other program and by word of mouth, they must go to the other people and we should have more and more money. That is the strategy that we apply. Who's coming in and thanks to all of you. Uh, a safety related question. Are helmets mandatory for just motorcycles or also for bike, uh, bic bicyclists? Uh, well, I, I understand the question must be coming from U.S., uh, but, well, we, we hardly have any uh, bicycle riders. I, I mean, I, I would say almost no one comes to office on bicycle. Uh, one is because of the location, second is because we are located mostly in large cities, so it is not practical to use bicycles there. And, well, you know India's traffic very well, so people don't come on bicycles. Uh, they come on cycle, uh, they come on uh, two wheelers, they come by public conveyance, they come by their cars. And, uh, but uh, if the, there was a significant population, then yes, of course there would be different helmets for bicycle riders, but they would be necessary. Uh, what social stigmas do you have to overcome in India to get individuals to exercise or change their diet? Please repeat the question. I couldn't hear the first part of it. Yeah, sure. Social stigmas. What social stigmas do you have to overcome to get people to exercise or change their diet? Uh, actually, uh, there is no social stigma in India as far as exercise or diet is concerned. But yes, there are some issues. There are some regional preferences. There are some cultural preferences. There are some religious preferences as well. But there is no stigma as far as exercise and diet is concerned. People are very willing, people are very interested, and uh, there is a culture. There is a culture of health which is increasing. So we, stigma you see in uh, case of only psychiatric illnesses or mental disease. In case of diet, we did not see the stigma. Or maybe I have not understood the question properly. That's all. fine. That's fine. I, I, I understand your response and then the question. I think it makes sense. There's no specific stigma related to that. Um, of course, a question on ROI, return on investment. As you know, uh, Dr. Shiam in the U.S., that's a big deal. Um, what has been the ROI in India? Like, for example, improvements in productivity or 
uh, I think you already mentioned something about insurance costs. Uh, what, what's the ROI for your business leaders in, in India? Well, uh, it's, it's a very tough question. Yes, ROI is important and it's more important in IBM. Uh, we have global figures which are available, but uh, it's very difficult for me to give you exact figures in that. But we definitely see a, a positive return on investment. Now, there cannot be, uh, you cannot attach a value to a life which is saved, but uh, I can definitely uh, share with you or tell you uh, a certain thing when it comes to that. I expected this question. Well, uh, like I said, there has been a 5 percent reduction in obesity. Yes, there have been uh, cases uh, wherein uh, when we calculate the health related acute coronary events. So in the people who have attended our program and people who have not attended our program. So these are the two groups in which we have studied. And we have found that people who have attended our program, the number of and the percentage of these events was drastically and significantly lower than the number people who did not attend the program. So we have seen lesser acute events in these people, lesser hospitalization and lesser uh, uh, hospital outgo or insurance outgo because that has been analyzed. And as I said uh, in my last slide, of which I am very proud that what more can be there that the medical insurance premium has been constant for last three years. No organization in India has achieved that which IBM has achieved. What more return on investment you can think of? Good. Thank you very much. There are uh, actually a, a few questions on um, if you also involve dependents of family members in your wellness initiatives, because uh, some of the you know insurance costs are, uh, are carried by, by them or, or are caused by them, I would say. Do, do you cover family members or, or do you involve them, uh, dependents? Yeah, we are extending our programs more and more to the family members. The wellness advisor program, which we have started, it is extended to the family members. The in-house programs, I mean, the uh, workplace programs are difficult to extend to the family members because people stay at different places. They don't stay close to the workplace. Uh, but yes, we are uh, trying to go into the, develop the partnership so that when an employee goes for his medical checkup, he gets a rebate. And if he takes his family with him, he takes a further rebate so that there is an incentive to take the family. Uh, as far as our wellness advisor or EAP services are concerned, they are available to both employees and family members, including even the parents. Even parents can take benefit of our employee assistance services, and to that extent we are trying to cover families. And uh, you may be knowing that a large number of our people, our population work from home, and they have access, so uh, the family members can also indirectly have access to the wellness programs that we have conducted, to the virtual sessions which are available, to the recordings that are available. But that will be only through employee as of now. But we want to extend more and more benefits to the family member. You have quite a few employees uh, working from home. Um, is that, do you see that as more of a challenge to get to those employees or, or because IBM, IBMers are so uh, technologically savvy that it, and then used to, to doing everything through the uh, the computer and the internet is it's not not a big challenge for you not, not a big barrier for you. Uh, in the, to some extent, it's a challenge, but not it's not a major challenge because whenever we are conducting virtual sessions, because of the large numbers that we have, we have to necessarily have virtual sessions, and we. Uh, our communications are also uh, in the soft copies and school net, so they can be accessed any, from anywhere in the country or for that matter from anywhere in the world, so that's not a big issue. When it comes to the physical face-to-face -face interaction, yes, that is the time, but then those who work from home also come to the office at least once a week or at whatever frequency is there, so they come and take advantage. In fact, uh, some of our programs motivate them to come to the office whenever we are, like when we have our flu vaccination program, about which I didn't talk much, or when we have our health screening program. Those who are working from home, they come to the offices, they take advantage of this benefit.
So I do not see it as a major challenge. Uh, related to that, there's a question um, on uh, from John. Is there an interest in using online mobile portal access to health and wellness program as an alternative to your phone-based health line? Uh, in fact, uh, the EAP services or wellness advisory services that we have, they come in both forms. They come online as well as telephone. So people can email, people can log in and go online and post their questions on the internet and they can get their answers. When they want to take appointments, they can go online. And when they desire to talk, the phone line is available. So our approach has been twofold. We go online as well as on the phone. And the third dimension is face-to-face, -face, wherever it is required or wherever an employee is at that. Okay, good, good. There's a few interesting questions here from, from some of your, your Indian colleagues um, around the issue of if you plan to spread your program, your experience, and your knowledge beyond IBM. So one of, one of these questions, for example, is do you get requests from fellow companies to adopt your program? And are you planning to spread it out of, outside of IBM in India? Uh, we are definitely good corporate citizens. And uh, we take this opportunity wherever there are various professional conferences. We share our programs and our activities. And we share the details with the people. We are very open. We are always available whenever somebody, because emulation, is the best form of flattery. So if anyone feels that our programs are useful and they want to have any ideas or any support or any design guidance from us, we are always open to that. We have got some requests and we have helped them. Uh, in the professional community, occupational health community that is there in India, there is a give and take. And we exchange ideas, we exchange programs, and we exchange our experiences through our national conferences. So I would request that colleague to kindly come and attend our conferences and get benefit not only from IBM but also from other leading organizations. Good. Uh, the specific question here: Are employees charged for any of these initiatives at IBM? Absolutely not. Employees are not charged for any wellness program. Employees are not charged for any telephonic advice or EAP service or wellness advice that is concerned. Employees are not charged for that. This at the hand of at the hands of employees, these programs are totally and completely free. Good. Interesting question. I think we have time for a few more. I have twenty uh, five minutes left here. Um, interesting question here. Uh, how do global agencies, or I, I would I would think international organizations outside of India, perceive Indian wellness program? Uh, Shiam, I know you've traveled quite a bit, and, and so you're probably well well positioned to answer that. How do how do global agencies perceive Indi Indian wellness program? In my experience, I had very positive experiences, even in my earlier organization as well as IBM. They are recognized very well. I have been invited twice uh, to the triennial conferences of International Commission on Occupational Health to talk about the wellness programs or the activities that we are conducting in India in our organization. In 2006 at Milan and in 2012 at Mexico, Cancun, which was very recent, wherein we have presented the work that we are doing. So we see a good global acceptance to whatever we are doing. Otherwise, I mean, on the first occasion they can invite you by mistake, but when they invite you again, then you have to really talk something. Um, are you seeing a higher level of responsibility on the manager's side, uh, they have, to promote the programs? For example, are they included in their performance reviews? They're not, it is not, it does not directly reflect in their performance review. But uh, indirectly, it certainly affects. Because if the team is a cohesive team, if the team is doing well, the productivity of the team will always be higher. Of course, we depend on managers. We depend on managers to take our programs to the employees. We depend on managers to participate, to motivate them. And our managers are conscientious. They definitely do that. 
but it is the wellness programs or participation in the wellness programs as of now is not into their performance appraisal. However, I take it as an excellent suggestion and I will definitely put it forward to my management to include that. Okay, we have a uh, question here. I think let's take two more here on tobacco use. He says, what percent of employees use tobacco in India at, at IBM? I don't know if you can share that or not. And how do they get served? Or I guess how, how, do, how are these uh, addressed, I mean, with programs? <clears throat> IBM is a tobacco-free company. We do not allow any tobacco consumption in any form within our premises, within our buildings or outside our buildings. Uh, and uh, we very strong, we have tobacco cessation programs also available, we promote it and uh, we do not uh, have any figures of tobacco usage. However, the health risk assessment exercise that we have started conducting in that we may get some input on the tobacco usage, but I am not aware of what, what is the prevalence of uh, tobacco consumption as of now. Maybe as a, as a last, I, I think a good question, I've seen a few uh, questions on this issue uh, in terms of what you consider, I know you've talked a lot about your program, what do you consider uh, as the most important components of a good employee wellness program? Maybe you can just briefly summarize a couple of bullets, what you think are the most important components, and then we'll wrap it up. <clears throat> For Gen Y, and we have a very young population which is working. So we have to see that the program should appeal to them. Program should appeal to their taste, and program should appeal to their way of life. If it is not there, they will not participate. Uh, that is number one. Number two, I think, is the quality of the program is very, very important. We have to design the programs appropriately, and we have to ensure that there is a good quality because a bad quality program, a program conducted badly will do more harm than good to the organization because it will put people away. So therefore the quality of programs is very important. Third thing I feel is you must, something must come out of this program. So therefore the analysis, whatever data is generated in the program, the analysis of that data is very essential when you have programs like health screenings or fitness champions. And uh, where, wherein you have lectures and programs, you need to have evaluation. So we need to evaluate the programs that we send up. And there is no one program which will fit for all. And there is no one program which will succeed every year. Because as you know, in IT companies and in services companies, uh, organizations, there is a strong attrition rate. People change every year. So people with different tests will come in. So maybe sometimes you need to repeat some good things that you have done, but sometimes, most of the times, you need to innovate. So I think in case of health programs also, wellness programs also, innovation is the key. We need to innovate, we need to evaluate, we need to maintain the quality. Awesome Q&A session. I think we had, you answered like 20 questions, so thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to hand it back to, uh, to Sarah here to, to close it up, so thanks a lot. I would like to have a last word, uh, if you allow me. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, both the associations for this program. I would like to thank uh, Wolf for inviting me. I would like to thank uh, Sarah for hosting it so nicely. And I would also uh, like to thank uh, Leo and Ari, the technical support for this program, uh, for conducting it so nicely. There have been no hitches. There have been no glitches. And I'm extremely thankful to all of you. And your questions have also give us give me some food for thought, some suggestions, and some inputs. So I'm thankful to all those who attended this program. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Pingo. Um, we we had a couple more questions. Um, if you weren't able to get your, your questions addressed, feel free to email us at info at wellnessassociation.com and we will distribute those to Dr. Pingle and uh, Wolf Kirsten so that they can answer them and then we'll be emailing them all to you um, along with the presentation and video. 
Um, again, that will be presented to you within uh, 48 hours via email. Again, on behalf of our presenters and our partner, the, the International Association of Worksite Health Promotion, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining today's presentation. Uh, a thanks to Will Kirsten um, as well for helping to make today's webcast possible. A special thanks to uh, Dr. Uh, Pingle for sharing your unique um, and successful employer perspective. Um, today's webcast, as I mentioned, is going to be available um, to you within 48 hours. Um, one last note before we leave you, I do want to um, recommend that all of you save the date for our sixth annual Corporate Wellness Conference. Uh, we do have um, topics on global wellness programs. Um, this past year we had uh, IBM present um, on one of those panel discussions alongside Wolf Person. Um, it's going to be held at the Gaylord National in Washington, D.C., September 20th through the 24th. So uh, please put that in your calendar. And then also um, keep an eye out for our uh, third part of this International Wellness Series in a couple of weeks. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great afternoon.